This book is called Children of Clay. It's about a family of Pueblo potters. The writer, Rena Swensel, is herself a potter who works in clay, and the photographs are by Bill Steen. For the grown-up or grown-ups who might be helping you read this book, there's a lot of good information on this page about the people who contributed to the book and a little information um, about the background that led up to the book. It is an early summer morning in northern New Mexico. Gia, which means mother, Gia Rose stands outside her house in the middle of Santa Clara, Pueblo. She listens to the sounds of the morning as she greets the rising sun and asks for strength to be a good person. Gia Rose looks across the plaza and beyond the houses of the pueblo, or village, to the low brown hills and the dark blue mountains. She is happy to live in such a beautiful place. Gia Rose can tell that it is going to be a very hot day in the pueblo. There will be no breeze to cool off the barren packed ground of the plaza or the walls of the houses made of adobe, sun-dried mud. It will be a good day to go to the mountains for clay, she says to herself. Before the sun is very high in the sky, Gia Rose and some members of her large family are ready to go. There is eight-month-old Benito, one of Gia Rose's 17 great-grandchildren, and his parents, Athena and Bill. Athena is one of Gia Rose's 22 grandchildren. There is five-year-old Devona, another great-grandchild. Also in the group are Eliza and Zachary, 11-year-old twins, and their mother, Nora, one of Gia Rose's seven daughters. Everyone is excited to be together and to be going to the mountains. Piling into a car and a truck, the family drives out of Santa Clara, Pueblo. Pueblo is the Spanish word for village. When the Spanish came into the southwest from Mexico in the 1500s, they called the Indian villages they saw pueblos. The word also came to be used for the people who lived in the villages. In Tewa, the language of the people of Santa Clara, the word for village is Owinga. The Tewa word for people is Towa. After they leave the Owinga, Gia Rose and her family cross the Posenga, the big water, called the Rio Grande River by the Spanish. The Posenga is important because there's not much water in the southwestern United States. The Rio Grande is the largest river in New Mexico. It brings water to the fields of the Towa, who grow corn, beans, and squash just as their ancestors did thousands of years ago. Gia Rose tells Devona, who is sitting next to her, in the car, that they are lucky to live so close to the strong, flowing water. A few miles along the road, they pass another Owinga called San Juan Pueblo. This is where the Spanish first lived when they came to the southwest. They built a large Catholic church in San Juan, as they did in many other Owingas. They named the Owingas after Catholic saints, like San Juan which means St. John. The Spanish wanted all the Towa of the Southwest to think and be like them. But the Towa had their own languages and ways of life. They did not want to be like the Spanish. The people of San Juan speak Tewa, as do three other nearby Owingas. Gia Rose explains to Devona, that San Juan is just like Santa Clara because it also has a wide plaza from which you can see the hills and mountains and watch the clouds move across the sky. She talks about how the cloud spirits come from the mountains to bring rain to the Toa and their crops. The mountains are far away from Santa Clara. It takes most of the morning to get to them. Gia Rose and her family leave the paved roads and ride along a narrow, winding dirt road. When the car and truck stop, 
The children are ready to run and move their stiff legs. The grown-ups gather the shovels, picks, buckets, and tubs, and begin walking to where they will dig clay. They call the children to follow. Eliza carries baby Benito in her arms as they walk around the low bushes and trees. The clay pit is not far. Before they begin digging, Gia Rose stands quietly in front of the pit and talks to Clay Old Woman, who is the spirit of clay. Gia Rose tells Clay Old Woman that she has brought her family to get some clay. She says that they will work respectfully and carefully with the clay that they take. She thanks Clay Old Woman for being generous with herself. After Gia Rose is finished, she nods her head, and Zachary, Eliza's twin brother, starts digging. Everyone helps to fill the buckets and tubs with clumps of sparkly brown-orange clay. Eliza helps by taking care of little Benito. When the containers are filled, they are put in the truck. Then the children run to play in the cool stream. They splash and jump. What a good idea it was to come to the mountains. Afterwards, they eat their lunch in a shady place under a tree, while Gia Rose tells them the story of Water Jar Boy. Water Jar Boy was born as a clay water jar. He grew up with all the other children of the Pueblo and wanted to do whatever they did. One day, his grandfather was going rabbit hunting. Water Jar Boy. Grandfather said, You have no arms or legs. You cannot walk or hunt. Water Jar Boy told his grandfather that he could roll, even though he couldn't walk. Hmm. So, Grandfather agreed to take him. When they came to a low hill, Grandfather placed Water Jar Boy on his side and gave him a gentle shove. Water Jar Boy rolled and rolled until he crashed into a... He broke into many pieces, and in the midst of the pieces sat a young boy. The boy ran and hid behind a tree. When Grandfather reached the bottom of the hill, he could not find his grandson. He was getting worried when he heard a voice calling, Grandfather, Grandfather, here I am. Grandfather was surprised when he saw a boy coming from behind a tree. The boy was smiling. When the boy explained who he was, Grandfather was very happy. Hand in hand, they hurried back to the Pueblo so everybody could see that Water Jar Boy was a real boy with arms and legs. After the story, the family is ready for the long drive back home. The children fall asleep in the car while the grown-ups talk about things going on in the Owinga. When they get back to Gia Rose's house, it is late afternoon and everyone is tired. But before they go to their own houses, they help to pick the large sticks and stones out of the clay. Then Zachary pours water into the buckets and tubs of clay. The clay will be set aside for a few days to slowly soak up the water. Several days later, Gia Rose and two of her daughters, Judy and Tessie, do more work on the clay. They sit outside Gia Rose's house in the middle of the Owinga and push the wet clay through screens to take out small rocks and twigs. Devona sits next to her great-grandfather, Michael, G. Rose's husband. She watches and waits for someone to ask for water or another uh, scraper or to go answer the telephone. After the clay is cleaned, fine white sand must be mixed into it. This will keep the clay from cracking during the drying process. Mixing in the sand is a big job. Judy and Tessie take turns working the sand into the clay with their bare feet Finally, the work is done, and the clay is wrapped in a cloth and set aside to rest for about a week. When the clay is ready, some of the children and grown-ups of Gia Rose's family get together. They laugh and talk while they coil, pinch, 
press and smooth the clay to make bowls and figures of animals and people. Eliza rolls out slabs of clay with a rolling pin. She puts the slabs together to make a big creature with sticks coming out of its head. Devona shapes lumps of clay to make a pair of hands ready to hold something. Micah, another cousin, rolls ropes of clay to make big and small snakes. Aaron, Micah's sister, works carefully on a small bowl. She forms the sides of the bowl by coiling ropes of clay around and around. The adults also play with the clay. G. Rose makes a frog, while Eliza and Zachary's mother, Nora, creates figures of a mother with her two naughty children. Rena, Devona's grandmother, makes a small cup. While they work, Gia Rose tells the children about Clay Old Woman. She says that Clay Old Woman lies within the earth and the clay. If people talk to her with respect, she will help them to create beautiful things. Gia Rose says that the pots and figures they make will be alive because Clay Old Woman will continue to live and breathe inside of them. In order to know that Clay Old Woman is breathing within their pieces, they must be quiet and listen. As they work, the children can feel Clay Old Woman in their hands. When they finish coiling and forming the clay, everyone carefully puts the pieces out of the way to dry. Big pieces, like Nora's figures, are wrapped in cloth so that they don't dry too fast and crack. The children know not to touch the clay pieces while they are drying because they are very fragile and will break easily. A week later, it is time to smooth the pieces with sandpaper. Eliza is very careful as she helps to sand the hands that Devona made. She sits working with her grandmother, Rose, her Aunt Rena, and her Aunt Tessie, while the younger children play close by. Sanding the pieces is hard work. Children quickly get tired of doing it, but 11-year-old Eliza works as hard as the adults. Old great-grandfather Michael loves to sit and watch everyone at work. Ten years ago, before he had a stroke, he helped to sand the pots and put designs on them. He also helped to dig the clay, as Pueblo men usually do. When the pieces are as smooth as possible, Gia Rose takes out her special polishing stones. Some of the stones are special because her grandmother, or aunts, gave them to her. Others she found in special places. All the stones are special because they are hard and smooth, and when they are rubbed against the pots, they make the pots shiny. Before the polishing begins, the pieces are coated with a thin, wet clay called slip. Then the children pick up the stones and begin to polish their figures and pots. Their hands move quickly before the wet slip dries. They work quietly because they have to pay close attention to what they are doing. After each piece is finished, Gia Rose admires it. She talks about how pretty it is and about what design might be put on it. Gia Rose decides to put a lizard on one of her pieces. She will use wet slip to paint the lizard onto the polished surface with a brush. Sometimes she forms a lizard figure out of clay and attaches it to the piece before it is dried. Gia Rose knows many ways to design and decorate pottery. Eliza decides not to put anything on her piece. Aunt Tessie likes the shiny polish on one of her pots and also decides not to put a design on it. Other pieces are painted with cloud, mountain, bear, lizard, and water snake symbols. These designs have been used by the Santa Clara Toa for hundreds of years. The bear paw design is used to help make the pot strong and remind people of the healing powers of the bear. 
The lizard is respected for the way it moves quickly over the ground. Both the clouds and the mountains are symbols of rain, for which the Toa are always thankful. The water snake reminds people to be respectful of flowing water, like the Posenga. Another morning, some weeks later, the family gathers again, this time to fire the pots and pieces. At each gathering, different members of the family are present. Pueblo people work in this way. They help each other, make, sand, polish, and fire pots, but the same people seldom do all the work. The group changes, but the pottery-making process remains the same. Firing makes the clay strong so that the pieces will not melt again or break easily. It can happen almost anywhere that a fire can be built. This time it is being done at the house of Devona's grandmother, Rina. Great Aunt Tessie is one of the oldest women present and in charge of the firing. Devona will help her. The firing process is exciting because if it is not done right, many pieces may break. To get ready, Devona and Great Aunt Tessie carefully set the pieces on a metal rack in the pit. Great Aunt Tessie puts a metal cover over the pieces so that the fire will not burn directly on them. Devona helps to st The fire is started. As the wood burns, everyone watches and listens for popping and cracking sounds. These sounds mean that something has cracked or exploded in the fire. Clay old woman to help the pots live through the fire. It seems like a long time before the fire burns out and the pieces can be seen. The grown-ups and children gather to find out what has broken. There are usually some broken pieces, but there are always some good pots and figures, too. Devona is excited about a tiny black blue spouts. A large jar of this kind is used in wedding ceremonies. Members of one family drink water that has been blessed out of one spout, and members of the other family drink from the second spout. Afterwards, the water jar is shattered so that the bond between the bride and groom and their families will never be broken. Many years ago, the Toa of Santa Clara and the other Owingas made pottery only for their own use, for cooking, eating, or storage. These days, the pottery of Santa Clara is highly valued, and many people want to buy it. Some of the pots and figures fired today will be given to friends or family members. Most of the pieces will be sold to visitors or traders who come to the Owinga. Others will be sold to art galleries and stores in places nearby or far away. The children of Santa Clara also sell their pots and figures. Devona and her cousin Aaron set up a table outside Gia Rosa's house. They put up a sign that reads, Frogs for sale, and wait for people to come and buy pots, frogs, and other small figures. There are always many tourists visiting Santa Clara Pueblo, so it's not too long before the children sell a frog. Although many things are changing to Clara Pueblo, pottery making is still much the same as in the past. It still happens mostly outdoors and is done completely by hand. Making pottery helps children like Eliza, Zachary, Devona, Aaron, and Micah Remember the place, the mountains, and the sky as they work and play in clay with their mothers, aunts, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers. It helps them to remember that they are all children of clay old woman. The End And all that is where the story ends, there's a lot you can go back to and look at in this book. All the pictures have captions that you can read or have a grown-up read to you. There are maps to look at. And here on this page, there's a list of the special words used in the story that come from uh, the Toa um, and that are used in the Southwest. You can practice some of those words, adobe, um, words like oinga. And you can look to see, if you're interested in this topic, what other books are like this that you can read more. 
This has been a book you can spend a lot of time looking over the pages. This book is Children of Clay. It's about a family of Pueblo potters. It was written by Rena Swensel. The photographs were done by Bill Steen.